Hi, I'm Angela White, biologist, product developer, and former high school biology teacher at Carolina Biological Supply Company. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to pour an agarose gel for electrophoresis. Carolina kits come with two different forms of agarose, melt and pour and agarose powder. With melt and pour agarose, the agarose has already been dissolved in buffer. All you need to do is melt it. Be sure to follow proper lab safety protocol before performing any procedures. The easiest way to melt the agarose is in a microwave. Loosen the cap before you put the bottle in the microwave. Keep a close eye on the agarose and swirl it every minute or so to keep it from boiling over. Depending upon the power of your microwave and the size of the bottle, the agarose should melt completely in anywhere from 4 to 30 minutes. You can also melt the agarose in a boiling beaker of water on a hot plate. Make sure the water comes up to the level of the agarose in the bottle and loosen the cap. Agarose melted in this way takes longer to melt than agarose does in a microwave. Many Carolina kits come with powdered agarose and a concentrated buffer solution. Remember that the ions in the buffer are what carry the current through the gel, so the gel should be made with buffer. A 1x concentration of buffer will be used to make the agarose solution for the gel. Most often, the 20x stock solution will be used to make a 1x buffer. To dilute a 20x solution, mix one part 20x stock solution with 19 parts distilled water. I will mix this by sealing the top of the cylinder with some parafilm. I will make a 0.8% gel. To do this, I will mix 0.8 grams of agarose with 100 milliliters of the 1x buffer I just made. Swirl the flask a bit to distribute the powdered agarose throughout the buffer. Otherwise, as it melts, it will form a sticky mass which is hard to dissolve. Dissolve the agarose either in a microwave or on a hot plate. Whether you heat the flask in a microwave or on a hot plate, watch the flask carefully. Once it becomes hot, swirl it every minute or so to prevent boiling over. Depending on the volume of agarose used and the microwave or hot plate, it may take anywhere from 2 to 30 minutes for the agarose to completely melt. So plan ahead to provide yourself plenty of time. The agarose is completely melted when you see no particulate matter if you hold the flask up to the light. It will look like water. Avoid pouring the agarose gel while the solution is still very hot. This will extend the life of your gel trays. The ends of the gel tray are open and must be sealed before the gel can be poured. Some gel trays come with gates or dams for doing this. The dams that come with this gel tray fit tightly over the end of the tray. Some trays are sealed with masking tape. When sealing the masking tape, make sure you use good quality masking tape that is not many years old. Otherwise, it will not seal well. Run your thumb along the edge of the gel tray to make sure that the tape is stuck well. Almost all trays have notches for the combs to fit into. Many trays also have notches in the center of the tray so that two rows of samples may be run at one time. You can only run two rows of samples if you can get adequate separation of your DNA bands by running the gel only part way. Once the comb is placed and the agarose is cooled to the point that you can quickly touch it without burning, you are ready to pour. With most equipment and for most labs, the gel should be between one half and three quarters of a centimeter thick. The gel needs to be thick enough so that the wells are deep enough to hold your sample. Don't make the gel too thick. Remember, the thicker the gel, the longer it will take to stain and de-stain. Make sure that the agarose has flowed completely under the teeth of the comb. Otherwise, you will have holes in the bottom of your wells. It will take about 15 to 20 minutes for the gel to set. Once it is set, the gel will look cloudy. At this point, the gel can be placed in the gel chamber in preparation for loading. One final point, as long as they are not poured with stain in them, gels can be poured several days ahead of time. To keep them from drying out, store the gels covered with buffer in a sealable plastic container or in the electrophoresis chamber with the lid on. 
For additional information, see our electrophoresis kits, other equipment, and materials at carolina.com biotech.